There we go. There we go. Yeah, cameras are coming on. Nice, nice. All, all is all is good to see you guys. Anybody notice anything about my chair today? No, nothing. There you go. Rocking my Pittsburgh Steelers uh, blanket. Yeah. Anybody from Pittsburgh? No, anybody like the Pittsburgh Steelers? <laughs> no. <laughs> they suck. They don't play too well. I better say, I better not say that too loudly. They, they they're a good team. They are very competitive. Let's put it that way. It could be nice. So in my house, we have a combination of um, different football fans. So I used to be a Rams football fan in, uh, back, back in the day when I lived in St. Louis. They went to the Super Bowl twice. They won. And after that, it was just downhill until we were like, dudes, man, get out of here. They, they went to Los Angeles and uh, took them by almost 20 years to come back and, 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 uh, and uh, do something, right? Almost, I think, almost. Uh, and then we have who are the folks from Wisconsin? Green Bay, right? <laughs> Green Bay. So my daughter is a Green Bay fan. She's got everything from cheese heads to uh, jackets to oh my goodness, everything. She's she's a fanatic of Green Bay, and I I don't know. Do these guys even play? Uh, who else? And then, uh, well, I live in Atlanta, so we have Falcons, but, eh, you know, uh, those guys don't know how to play football. So we don't have a football team in Atlanta, NFL. But what we do have, what we do have is the Georgia Bulldogs. Anybody from Atlanta? Or close by? No one? So the Georgia Bulldogs are a college football, you know, UGA, University of Georgia. So they are the meanest, baddest best guys that you can find those guys play football those kids play well it's actually more interesting i think just to see those young kids uh you know put everything into it but um, cool but uh let's see what what do i want to talk about today today i want to talk about it's more it's kind of going to be more lecture and then bama you're atlanta but you like bama well i'm so sorry crimson red angela really <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah there we go baby yeah yeah yep yeah. yeah football yeah. football is a whole uh, other topic that uh, that we could get into but uh let's see today uh the topic really is actually optionistas options trading uh, if you want to become uh, an options trader you're serious about it what exactly does that mean and um you know even if you've been trading for a little while, a year, two years, but but you're struggling, there there are things that uh, there are things that you come across even as a seasoned trader. Even my myself, you know, come up uh, with a few problems. I'm human, so some of the some of the issues or some of the things that people talk to me about are uh, you know they they don't have any conviction with trades. They have trouble finding good trades. They don't know a good trade when they see it. And they don't have the confidence when they f finally figure out that uh, that it's a good trade. By the time they get the confidence, that trade is no longer good. Sometimes they don't even know it. They just get into the trade anyway, right? Uh, does that sound familiar? Yeah, sounds familiar that uh, you see a trade, you don't have the confidence, you don't understand the math behind it, you don't know how you're going to make money. So, are you in a trade and... Uh, you know, it's green. Green meaning that you have a positive P&L. And you're trying to figure out, should you take the money and run? And, you know, or should you wait and get a little bit more? And, and you have no idea. And then you go get your coffee, you come back, and you're negative. <laughs> <laughs> Does that happen a lot? <laughs> yeah. Even, even I do that, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm in a trade. It's green. I go take a smoke break. I don't even smoke. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's one of those things that people in the corporate world do. I hear they take smoke breaks. <laughs> what does that look like? 
it's got to be a smoker or something, right? So you go take a break, you come back, and the uh, done thing has turned around. So <laughs> should have gotten out, kick yourself. Uh, and then you're bouncing from uh, strategy to strategy. I'm actually looking at a screen here. Let me let me present this. I should. Eddie, are you re you're not recording yet, right? Uh, do you want me to record? <laughs> It's recording. You do the meat and potatoes, yes. <laughs> I think I'm recording. I think I'm recording. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm recording. Uh, hang on a quick second. Let me. Yeah, I, th I think I'm recording. So, mm -hmm. so share my screen. Uh, desktop number two. There we go. Yep. This is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this. Uh, Start the slideshow. Yeah. So yeah, this is what I'm talking about right here. Uh, you know, you're bouncing from uh, strategy to strategy. You think that uh, you know you're doing pretty well with whatever you're doing, and then it stops working, and you hear your friend is doing these, so you decide to go try that. Uh, but okay. but you don't have really something that that you're steady and making money with. So that that's always a problem. Are you sharing a document or something? I I, uh, I, on my end, I just see your desktop, the blue. You you just see them. Oh, wait, really? Uh, I thought I was sharing my screen. No. I'm not sharing my screen? We see the blue lines on the desktop. OK, so let me try this again. Ooh. Man, I should I should know how to do this. All right, tell me what you see. Problem statement. Ah, that's what I was talking about. That's what I was sharing before. And I was on this uh, third bullet and uh, going on to the fourth bullet now. So oh, are you trading strategies that you're not familiar with? Things that, uh, you know, you either you heard somebody talk about, you read on the internet, so some Discord, you know, Twitter exchange, uh, and you just haven't tried it, and and you and you hear that it makes money a lot. A good example is uh, credit spreads. A lot of people are doing credit spreads, and they don't fully understand how to make money using them. They just know that uh, every once in a while they make green, every once in a while that thing expires worthless, and they make a lot of money, or they're just lucky. They don't know what they're doing, right? Uh, or maybe they don't even understand the risk of such a trade. So trading strategies that you're not familiar with, especially the P&L or the risk profile of that strategy is uh, uh, that that can be detrimental to your to your portfolio. So you, you don't want you don't want to you want to trade something you understand just like you buy something you understand. I buy things that I understand if I if somebody's selling me something uh, and I don't understand it, it's unlikely that I will buy it, right? Like many insurance products, you know, some people, and, and this is no, I'm, I'm not really knocking on people who sell insurance, but, you know, insurance is a, it's a fear business, right? It's, it's, it's sold based on fear, you know, making me fear that, you know, things might happen. And so I need to pay somebody to protect that risk. Well, some of them are, valid some of them you know it's just baseless fear but uh, if i don't understand the program i more i more than likely will not uh, will not buy it uh things like um you're being burned by programs that do not deliver what am i talking about here maybe maybe you signed up for you know to learn something uh, and again here i'm not knocking any schools i'm just saying that you know you, you can spend a lot of money just trying to learn something but if that program is not delivering, maybe, maybe you should, maybe you should switch, right? Maybe you should switch. Uh, it's like trying to build a concrete delivery business using your, using your Tesla, right? You know, you decide that, uh, you know, you will have a really big trunk in the Tesla, and and so that's what you're going to use for delivering uh, you know lumber and building materials is this is that really a good idea 
No, or is that really a good idea? Or Toyota? No, you go get a truck, right? Get a truck, get the right equipment for the job. So uh, then you might not have uh, that, uh, uh, you know, the right tools. So the vision today is uh, how do we create some simple rules to trade? Uh, how do we how do we define to trade mechanically? By that I mean, let's find a system that works. Let's make it work and let's repeat it over and over and over again. You've probably heard me say, you know, give an example that uh, if if you have a job, you know, you show up to work on Monday morning, eight o'clock. You know, right on time, you work all day long. Now, on Friday, you might even get a paycheck or the next Friday, right? Is, is that common? Anybody ever experienced that? The WORK program? Uh, here in Georgia, you know, we have the WORK program. Anybody familiar with that? Yes. Yeah, Shaquilla. Shaquilla, you, you're familiar with the WORK program? It's yes, in many, very. It's in, it's, it's in many states. If you're not familiar with the WORK program... Uh, <laughs> You need to get out more often, right? <laughs> work, work. So um, once you have figured out that uh, you can show up to work on Monday morning, 8 o'clock, and consistently you get paid, what do you do the following week? You show up at 8 o'clock or 7.30, 7.45, and you make sure you do that. Before you know that, you formed a habit, and for the next 30 years or so, that you, know, you, you get paid. So once we find a good trade... We know how to execute it. We know how it works. We know how the PL looks like. Even before we get into the trade, we know it's how it's supposed to work. We know the rules. Here's my profit target. Here's my risk target. If things go, don't go well, here's where I get out. Uh, if things go well, this is how much I'm going to, uh, to make, right? And this is what I have to do in order to make that money. Right? How do we turn that theory, that theory into practice? How do we get into the trade and get out of it? Meaning that you also know your environment. You're not fumbling. When you're seeing that you're up $1,000 and you're fumbling, you're trying to call somebody to tell you how to get out of that trade. That really sucks, doesn't it? It means that you entered a business and you have no idea how to make the money. You don't know how to work the cash register. You've got a customer standing in front of you. He's, he or she has got a $100 bill, and you don't know how to take that $100 bill from them. That's really sad, isn't it? It's bad. You need to know how to take that $100 bill, $500 bill from your customer, and put it into the cash register. That's how you cash in, right? So in the stock market, how do you cash in? How do you sell that stock? How do you close that position? In life, that is not the place to do it. You need to know how to do this in your SIM. Your SIM is not going to give you real money, so why are you counting the dollars there anyway? Uh, cool. Uh, staying solvent means that uh, your cash flow is not going down. If you're a business, and, and, and by the way, we have to think of this as a business. If you're doing this as a hobby, uh, go search for trading as a hobby. I wonder how many hits. I've never tried that. Trading as a hobby. <laughs> I should try that. Maybe I should. But yeah, this you, you don't you don't want to do this. You're playing with real money, so no, don't don't try it. You know, treat it as a business. It, it's serious things. Uh, so staying solvent means that whatever amount of money that you invest so at the beginning of the of the whole exercise you you had a mind shift you had a mindset change that said you know what i'm tired of the grind i want to make uh, i want to make my life better i want to make money i've talked to a lot of people who are trying to make trading plans and one of the things the top thing that i hear all the time is i want to quit my job right i want to be my own boss. I want to make my own money, control that. I want to earn as hard as I work, right? Not the other way around. So when you're, when you're in the work program, you're, you're employed, sometimes, or rather many times, you don't get paid any more than what you earn every week. Whether you work 
twice as hard in the same 40 hours. But in the trade market, in the stock market, you might uh, you might be able to make a little bit more based on what strategies that you use and how you invest, how you scale up. So that's all called uh, staying solvent. When you trade, uh, a lot of us do swing trades, and uh, you know another set of us do day trades. But you want to reduce the amount of time that you're in that trade. Right, so let's talk about that. Uh, you want to reduce the amount of time. If it's a swing trade, you don't want to be in a trade the full 45 days. So we highly recommend that you, when you buy options, when you trade options, and you're long on options, that you're going 45 to 90 days. Remember that that time is really so that you can, you have time, or the trade has time, the position has time to be in the right spot gain the right gains, uh, do its thing, and you have 45 days to make a correction if you need to. It doesn't mean you have to be in that trade for 45 days. You don't have to make your whole retirement you know, in that one trade. Take the profits when you can, not when you have to. Right? Take them when you can, not when you have to, which means that you have to have clear, consistent goals that, you know, if, if you're making, um, if you're making a you know, 100 bucks or 500 bucks, whatever it is, once you reach that goal, you're out, right? So you want consistent gains. Uh, that one's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. So every every week you're trying to make something or every month, whatever, right? Does that sound good? And, um, and then you want to minimize losses. That means that you have a risk management plan. That's what that assumes. And the answer should be yes, I have a risk management plan. If you don't, we need to talk and let's figure out how do you protect those gains that you're making. Uh, this all has to be part of your vision because there's no sense in making all this money and then losing it in a couple of days. It doesn't make sense. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of patience, a lot of sweat. Dare I say, a lot of blood. So we need, we need a plan that, that helps you out. Cool. Uh, pace yourself. Meaning that, uh, you know, in a marathon, um, you know, you don't sprint like it's 100 meters. You, you start off slowly, you pace yourself, and you're more than likely to, uh, to, 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 to get it, you know, to get far. So, so how do you qualify? How do you, how do you, um, uh, how, do, how do you get this? Uh, wrong screen. Am I, am I sharing the right screen? Oh, that, that, that must have been an old message, maybe. All right. Okay. So uh, you, 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 need to, you need to be qualified. This is not for everybody, by the way. Right? Trading is not for everybody. So let me tell you what I think that an options trader or any trader needs to be. How do you, how do you qualify them? And it starts with you. You're the main ingredient of of this uh, trading of this business you're the you're the main ingredient you are the principal so you have to have a curious mind you have to be able to discover you have to be open to change new ways of thinking these are things that you will see in almost any other job description and options trader also has a job description and these are some of the soft skills that you need if you don't have them go find them learn them work on them and uh, number three is especially very, very important to be a solution creator, not just a seeker, right? I'm talking about this one over here, right? Be a solution creator, not a, what, what, what exactly does that mean? You, you're not, you, you don't need to be the one always asking questions. How do I do this? How do I do that? What does it take for you to discover how to do that on your own? How do you train your mind to create solutions? Uh, to read a chart and see, oh, I, I see an opportunity there, right? So those are those are things that that can help you. Uh, a pet peeve of mine is to be able to read. A lot of you are claiming that you know how to read. I beg to differ, right? I beg to differ. Some of you are just, uh, I don't know what you're doing. I'm curious. I, I I really don't know. But being able to read is important. Being able to read means that you can comprehend instructions. 
you can interpret in, uh, interpret instructions you can see what the system is telling you take the extra five seconds to read the whole thing or if you're reading a strategy understand what that strategy is doing or if you're reading a you know some education material be able to see that and uh, spend some time understanding it so you don't have to have a college degree you know college degree is probably a plus i think college degrees really just show that you're able to read and learn uh, but beyond that they they probably don't teach you much else other than uh, the ability to quickly quick up pick up uh, concepts so in this environment you have to be able to read and interpret not just instructions but also the data that you're getting because there's a lot of data in the financial world there's a lot of data there's there's stock charts, there's news, there's indicators, there's um, you know, all sorts of things, especially in your platform. If you're using uh, any advanced platform today, think of Swim, TradeStation, Webull, even Robinhood, all of these things, you just have to be able to know them. Don't let that environment be a, a roadblock. Uh, I think I'm just going to skip over to the last one. If you're going to give up before you finish, uh, exit quickly what does that mean it means don't waste other people's time right if you're gonna call someone and say you know cry that you know I'm suffering and I don't know what to do I'm just gonna give up my answer is just give up get out of my face it's cold it's not a nice thing to say but you need to make up your mind and decide you're going to finish the game the race you're going to learn, you're going to reset, and that way you can start getting help. But if your mindset is still old, in the sense that you, this is too difficult, then it's really hard to help. So I would suggest that uh, you know we work on ourselves a lot. And it's a continuous exercise, because if you're here, you're probably already made up your mind, this is going to be good, so that's good. But if you haven't yet dealt with that part of your life that needs to finish the game, maybe maybe you should still continue thinking about that. But it's very important because that psychology is what causes us to doubt ourselves, not believe, not trust, uh, not have confidence. The opposite is that you are a risk taker. You are able to learn quickly. You can adopt you can change you can pivot you can you can take a risk and that's a good thing so important that's the psychology part of uh, of uh, of where we are along with that uh this is another pet peeve of mine let me see what else i have here all right this is another pet peeve uh computer skills oh my goodness how many people do i talk to on every, you know every other day trying to explain something and we spend 10 minutes trying to figure out how to open something, how to find a file on your computer, how to open Think or Swim, how to click, how to read that thing. You need to have these basic skills. Spend a little bit of time, you know. Uh, it's not a nice to have. I'm going to read the screen here. It's not a nice to have. Maybe I should say that one more time. It is not a nice to have. It is mandatory that you have these basic skills. You're going to spend, this is what you do every day. So, no, I wish I knew how to find apps and files. No, you can't wish that. Um, so, allow me to rant on this one and say that you need to go figure out on your own how to use your computer. Right? I have zero patience for people who don't know how to share desktop. Yeah. So, all right, enough said on that. Uh, figure out how to use your computer, how to read your email or social email, where to find audio. So this is probably the worst slide. <laughs> yeah, this is probably the worst slide. Uh, but anyhow, figure that out. Uh, and then other things that you have, uh, you know, surprisingly, a lot of you don't have a calculator. You need a calculator. If you don't have anything else, you need at least a calculator, right? If you don't have a calculator, you need a good way to, did I spell that right? Calculator. Yes. 
uh, yeah, if you don't have everything else, uh, at least, you know, I think Walmart sells calculators for like five bucks, 10 bucks. Yeah, let me show you my calculator. Can anyone see my calculator? <laughs> yeah, five bucks at uh, five bucks at Walmart or seven bucks. With inflation, it's maybe now eight dollars. Yeah, so instead of your Starbucks, go, you know, get a calculator. Works real well. Uh, now the fun part. So now that we've gone through all of that, we need some solutions, right? We need to that that was the that was a doom and gloom. Now they now the uh you know fixing all the all of these. Um so let's 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 fix this. Let's fix this. Um we want to evaluate your portfolio. So most of you already have some money inside of a brokerage account. The platform doesn't matter because the the fundamentals are the same. And we'll talk about the fundamentals here shortly, but but do you have the right kind of watch list, right? Uh, if all your stocks, if all the stocks in your watch list are in the same sector, that's a problem, right? That's a problem because the market these days, actually for a long time, goes up and down based on sector. The tech sector is doing one thing. The health sector is doing another thing. The energy sector right now is booming, right? Uh, what other sectors are there? You know, retail, consumer, these and that. So there's about 11 sectors that, that we truck. Uh, so don't have all your eggs in one basket is what I'm saying. So you want to diversify by building a get great watch list. You can see some of those uh, things that I'm saying here in that example. Just look at that. You know, stocks that move, you know, at least five on average, right? ATR, if you don't know what ATR is, uh, you know, that's the average true range. I think all of you know what ATR is, uh, but there's a lot of uh, acronyms used in the industry and you should also know those uh, those acronyms and what they mean. Let's see some other things. Uh, maybe you've had a portfolio for a very long time and this is the time that you now, you know, come into realization that you need something to change. So maybe, Maybe you have some non-performing positions that you've held for a very, very long time. Uh, a long time is relative, right? It could be a year, it could be two years, it could be two months, whatever, six months, right? But I consider what, what, what I consider as non-performing positions are those positions that that are not giving you what your profit target is. So let's take an example. You buy one stock of XYZ for $100 and you hold it forever. Forever could be one year. And that stock has only risen to $150 at the end of that one year. But during that one year, the stock gained value to $200, $250. Then it lost value to $90. And now it's coming back. It's now at $150. Is that a performing position? That's not a performing position because you didn't take profit when you should have. You did not reinvest. You can't really say you made money on that. The opportunity cost was far greater and the opportunity cost on that was you were unable to invest that $100 properly, right? So I refer to some some parables in the Bible that say, you know, there's three guys, one was given one, and that was given five, I think, another one, ten. And, uh, and some guy buried it in the ground so that he doesn't lose money. That's a losing position, literally, because Jesus actually took it away from him and gave it to the one who had made some money. So look at your positions and see, you know, what you need to do. Uh, some of the things that I consider as bad trading styles, uh, there might be some some positives in this, but from my experience, uh, I want to close non-performing positions. I don't want to hold on to them hoping that at some point in the future, they are going to turn around, especially when you're working with options. Options have an expiration date. They're different than stock. So you have to have a different mindset that they are not a store of value, and at some point they will expire. And what is the natural thing for them to do? It's to expire worthless, 
or in the money or something like that but they will expire it's like uh, it's like keeping a tomato in your fridge for two months uh, things gonna go bad even in the right conditions the right temperature it, it can't survive for a very long time right is that a good example I don't know yeah, it works uh, don't average down you've had people saying average down or average up which means that the price of something is falling and you buy more of it so that now it looks on paper that you have actually spent less only makes sense if that thing turns around and goes back up many times when something is going down it takes time for it to go back up and if you're holding an options contract guess what you're running out of time don't average up or down bad idea uh, same thing with rolling bad positions there are some strategies that you can roll and maybe get out the only time that I would roll is to reduce my max loss right that's the only time that I would roll is to hedge a position that I can avert a max loss never take a max loss by the way that should that that should be on this slide let's add that all right never take max loss yeah max loss is a bad idea uh, especially if you're looking at it uh, you, you don't want to take max loss you have the opportunity to get out with something so we don't take max loss and then don't move your stop loss some people will be man this thing is going up I need to move my stop loss uh, it means that you really don't have a clear plan of of where it's going right let's think about that for a second if the trade is going well in the direction that you expect it to and you have a take profit order and the position is moving towards that take profit order do you really need to move your max loss I mean your stop loss no just let it go to your profit target and get out right the only time that instead of taking your moving your stop loss a better way in my opinion and this is very very opinionated by the way a better way is to take profit at that time right take the profit at that time right if you've already decided that this is the point at which you are absolutely positively not going to tolerate any more or any loss then why don't you take your profit at that time take the risk off the table that's the better way in my opinion which kind of lends to the last one take profit when you can not when you have to right any any explanations on that one I don't think so so maybe you have a portfolio and um, you don't know what to do with your money that sounds like most of us right uh, here's an example you can do whatever you want but here's a basic example uh, say you have a five thousand dollar account I always recommend that you have a 20 percent cash position right 20 percent cash position means one thousand dollars of that is going to be in cash uh, there are many reasons why that could be in cash and uh, I talk about that in my class about how to how to protect that cash position and what to do with it uh, then divide your the, the rest of the money into three or four buckets right three or four buckets meaning that you will be able to trade three or four stocks and you can see here it's almost evenly divided uh, you know 1250 a piece on each stock and the last one is only two hundred fifty dollars can you find options trades that you can trade with two hundred fifty dollars uh, yes a lot plenty right plenty of stocks uh, where you can trade a position for two hundred fifty dollars so and uh, this is enough to give you at least you know a healthy amount every week so the reason I went with three or four is because with a small account you are not you don't have the luxury of trading every day because of the PDT rule by the way the PDT is the pattern day trade it's a FINRA rule SEC it has nothing to do with the broker the broker just enforces it right they don't make up the rule the rule has already been made and the, it's up to the broker to enforce it if you don't have 25k in your account 
uh, margin account, then you can only trade, well, how many days? What, uh, three in a, you can open and close uh, three trades in a five day rolling period. If you want, you can use uh, all three trades in one day, in one hour, and then just wait five days. You'll be good, right? Or you can spread it out, one trade every every couple of days. No more than three in a five business day uh, rolling cycle. So keyword there is business day. So Saturdays, Sundays do not count. Holidays do not count. It has to be a trading day. That's what's considered a business day. Uh, we're almost done here. So uh, define your weekly pro uh, uh, profit target. I don't know whether anybody has uh, has this or is willing to share. You can share in the chat if you like. But uh, I go with a very small weekly profit target. And then I figure out what kind of strategy I can I can use for that. By the way, can everybody see my slide uh, okay or do I need to make this a little bigger? Maybe I maybe I should maybe I should make it a little bigger. There we go. Uh, I'm not going to read this for you guys. You can read it, uh, but I want to show some examples. Some examples, uh, you know, use use some of the simplest uh, strategies that we know, which are calls and puts. That's the basic. That's where we all start. Just because they're the simplest does not mean that they are the safest. In fact, on the spectrum of risk, calls and puts are very very risky. Right? There are safer strategies to use with calls and puts in spreads, not credit spreads, by the way, but calls and puts form the foundation of all options trading. So, but they are the simplest. That's where we all start. So we need to figure out uh, how to uh, how to use those. Uh, define what your minimum profit target is. Uh, what your minimum profit target is. Let me explain that. That's I'm not talking about what the minimum profit for a trade that you're looking at. I'm talking about what you have defined in your trading plan that this is how much I want to make at a minimum every trade. Does that make sense? Maybe let's give an example. An example is I want to make $300. I want to make $500 on every trade. And I want to make three trades every week. So if my minimum trade per, uh, minimum profit target per trade is $500, right? And I want to make three trades per week. That's what? 500 times, that's $1,500, right? So I need to go find, I need to go learn and know how to find a trade that makes me $500. So once I have defined what my minimum is, does that mean that I will accept? Let's 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 go with five hundred. I decide that I want a trade that gives me at least five hundred dollars. Does that mean that if I see a great trade that gives me a hundred dollars, I should take it? Somebody say yes or no. What, what what's what what would you do? Let me see the chat. Uh, what would you do? Would you take this? Would you take the trade, or would you wait? Would you wait for the five hundred dollars opportunity? Right. You should. My answer would be: I would not take the trade. I would wait for that. For lack of a better word, I'll say perfect. Right. But we don't know that there's such a thing as a perfect trade, but we know what a high probability trade is. So I would rather wait for that higher probability trade to, to reach my goal than take the $1,500, right? That's called discipline, following the plan. That's right, Angela, following the plan. And you have to be disciplined enough. Remember, this is a business. This is not a hobby. So we don't just, you know, do anything. Even in your business, you decide who your ideal customer is. And you decide who you don't want to do business with. So... You don't want to do business with a trade that only gives you 100 bucks. It takes away your time and energy, gives you stress, and eats up the opportunity cost of you trading something that actually meets your goal of, say, $500 or whatever that goal is. So I would, I would, say, I would say wait for your plan. Uh, 
the next uh, the next few bullet points i guess you can just read on your own but but something that i i tell a lot of students is if you make a, if you get a loss don't add funds from your savings to cover losses right or to increase your portfolio size especially if it was not planned if you hadn't planned to increase your portfolio say you've, you if you have a plan to increase your portfolio by say you know $2000 every every few weeks maybe from your paycheck, your savings or something, that's all right. But if you're adding funds from savings to cover your losses, you're doing yourself a huge disservice because you're just telling your mind that it's okay, right? It's all right. I just, uh, I just lost $200. So in order for my account to look good, I need to go back to my savings account and add $200. Bad idea. Don't do that. Instead, figure out how to build better trades and don't trade based on what you lost every trade has to be on its own merit meaning that the trade has to be good it has to meet your rules um, all that good stuff that's what that next bullet is uh, let's see uh, what, what what's a stop loss anybody know what a stop loss is nobody knows what a stop loss is so uh, <laughs> To get uh, out, you, you do amount to yeah to get you out a certain amount so you don't lose all exactly. of your money or incur max loss right to get you out at a predetermined amount absolutely absolutely so the way that i look at stop losses is that it helps you not add zeros to the end of whatever you're losing right it's mm -hmm. okay to lose a hundred dollars if you plan for it, if you had said in you know in this particular trade, my stop loss is a hundred, meaning that I'm willing to risk. I'm not willing to lose. I'm willing to risk a hundred dollars in order to get, I don't know, three four hundred bucks, right? That's the mindset. That's the mind frame that I go in with. I don't go in with the mindset of I'm willing to lose. No, no I'm not. I'm never willing to lose. I'm simply willing to risk, right? So manage risk, we talk about this a lot in my program, right? Uh, what do you need to know to build this plan even further? Because this is the basics, this is the foundation of, of, uh, of knowing where to, where to go, what to do and stuff like that. Uh, you need to be very, very comfortable, be very knowledgeable about your platform and your environment, uh, starting with what you're using. Uh, let's say you work in an office. Uh, some of the things that uh, in the corporate world, when when you get a job, the first thing that you do is get is get access to everything that you need, right? They give you a computer. They set you up with an email. You get to know Outlook or whatever you know email platform that you use. They set you with up with Office so that you can build documents, SharePoint, uh, Slider, Slido, or whatever you know all of that good stuff and you get to know your environment same thing here your environment is your broker platform whether it's think or swim or trade station webull uh, e-trade all of those you know uh, what's the other fidelity get to know it very very well because you're going to be spending a lot of time there that's where you spend majority of your time so don't just dive into it and say man th yeah this one is just to help me make the money right no you you need to spend the time up front because it is time very well spent uh let's give another analogy on that you need a nice house you need a you need a nice solid house and you decide you're going to configure the bedrooms first before you even do the foundation that that's plain that doesn't work like that you have to work on the foundation first to build a house yes most yeah i think so right so uh when, when people are sharing their screens, I see a lot of noise. I see a lot of noise, right? They've got so many distractions. They've got 23 things open on their computer. And you wonder, you know, do we talk about multitasking. Does that actually work? And uh, the answer is no. You can only do one thing at a time. If you can do two things at a time, you're pretty good, right? You're pretty good. Um, most people cannot efficiently handle more than one thing at a time especially something like trading 
right? Trading is a very, very intense, intense activity. Uh, an analogy on that one would be maybe you have a storefront, right? You have a storefront that uh, uh, that you serve customers. Can you do your hair and attend to your customer at the same time? Right? That would be very bad for the customer. They would, you know, recognize that, you know, you're not really paying them any attention. You're, it says they're a second, they're secondary to the whole activity. The market knows that, by the way. The market knows and it can tell you from a mile away that you're not serious. And it will welcome you and say, give me your money. Or it's all right. Here's the basket. Just put your money over there. We'll take care of it for you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. You can't do that. Not a good idea. So give it the attention. Remove all distractions. Configure your platform to be clean. Why do you need to see the volume on your chart? How many people make decisions based on the volume? Right? Why do you have it in there? Right? You've got volumes. You've got 23 lines on that chat dude get a handle on it right just just get what you need look at what you need remove all the distractions right uh, I don't know that you can even make a simple decision with all that data that's just to confuse you Here's, uh, here, here's uh, something that, uh, to think about. Uh, when, when you have a really complicated plan or a really complicated mission, you look for the simplest solution to the problem. Is that about right? You look for the simplest solution to the problem. And if it's a really complicated problem, problem you need a backup. You need a backup to that simple solution. Here's my take on it. The backup needs to be simpler than the plan. And if it is simpler than the plan, you need to go for the backup. You can write that down if you want. That's, that's from Eddie, straight up. Go for the simplest plan. Uh, and if there's a simpler plan to that, that's what you need to go for. Right? Oh, by the way, if you want uh, my free public workspace and uh, customize it to make your own, I am willing to give it uh, out. I probably should. Uh, I will post it down here in the description down here. Lynn, did you see that? Um, I saw that a long time ago. Uh, no, 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 no. Me, me, me saying that you'll find this thing in the description down here. Oh, oh yeah. Uh -huh. Because it's going to be on like, YouTube, stuff like that. <laughs> I had to slide a joke in for the day, you know. <laughs> come on, walk with me. Walk with me here. Come on. Guys, come on. Oh my goodness. Oh, let's see. Uh, and I guess still didn't get it, but Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. <are> funny. <laughs> yeah, it's in the description. <laughs> All right, what do you need to know to build this thing even further? Some fundamentals. Um and this is what we teach. Well, this is what I teach. So how options trading works in simple terms. And you need to understand some basics. I listed out what the basics uh, that I consider, which is uh, days to expiration, DTE. Uh, you need to figure out uh, how to pick up the right, how to pick the right strike price, whether you need to go with calls or puts, whether you need to click on the bid or the ask or the delta theta, all of that good stuff. Those are the very basics. Get those out of the way. Don't let them be in the way of you trading. You need to fully understand uh, those basic things. Uh, the relationship between the price and the and the cost of an opt. Crop. Option. You're right. And the cost of an options contract. Did I finish typing there? Understand the relationship between the price of the underlying and the cost of an options contract. How do those things relate? Well, what's happening? I must have uh, cut and paste. Uh, understand which strategy to use based on price and the trend of the. I'm gonna have to look at my notes to see what I'm what where my 
thought process there was. And uh, do you really need you do you really know how to read and interpret a stock chart? <laughs> I'm just gonna highlight and leave that one there. A lot of you say you know how to read stock charts, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see, continued. Uh, yeah, support and resistance and uh, determining the best and uh, the most optimum entry points. This is huge. This is huge. So everybody knows we buy low, we sell high, or we sell high and buy low. But the question is, when you're looking at a chart, what is the what is that low and what is that high? When is it right to, to, to interrupt the movement between the support and the resistance? When, it is, when is it okay to do that? Is it ever okay? Is a question, right? Uh, how do you determine all of those? And then how do you determine what strategy to pick based on what you're looking at? I wonder if I have any more slides. Uh, all of that is so, so important. So what I'm talking about today is basic, you know, fundamentals of, of, of this main problem that we, we, we said. Uh, and I'm just bringing back that problem statement here again, is these are the things that we are trying to solve. And we've now just seen, based on going on through all those slides, that you don't necessarily have to be a new trader. You can be an experienced trader. You can have been trading for two years, but some of these things are... You know still bothering you so i'm gonna pause there and take questions and uh, don't all speak at the same time by the way how many time frames do you use just the daily and the 15 minute and that's it i use the yep a good question i use the daily to plot my charts and I use the 15 minute when I'm trading. Those are the two main time frames that I'm using. So. Because when you were talking about simplifying things, mm -hmm. I definitely am taking heed to that because I was um, I have um, like five minute, two minute, trying to get more data. And then sometimes I was, I mean, I, a lot of times I was getting confused what I was looking at going between all the time frames. So, okay, so I should be safe with just sticking with 15 minutes. Absolutely. Unless you're a day trader and you're micro trading, meaning that you're getting in and out of trades all day long, it does not make sense to have the five minute, two minute, one minute charts up there and drawing on them or even, you know, making decisions out of them. Okay. Right? If Got you're it. doing swing trades, then you, you're better off sticking with the daily and the 15 to help you make that decision you place your trade knowing that you're potentially going to be in that trade either a few hours a few minutes or it is going to be a few days does that make sense yeah i personally yeah. not a fan of swing trading I okay really see my results like that yes when i say like that i'm talking about during the day because a lot of times when i have that well, before I forget about the trade, so I'm like, I'm definitely not a swing trader. That's just me getting to know myself as a trader. So. Oh, I totally understand that. Uh, what you're describing is um, is this type of trader that, uh, and that's that's kind of me too also. I like to see results. I like to see them yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. And it comes, it, it is actually, uh, it's a symptom of fear. Mm, okay right it's a symptom of lack of confidence also okay the confidence that you can build a trade that will work well mm -hmm. and that you need to give it time it's a symptom of lack of patience okay. patience is a virtue right we know that we're blessed when we have patience when we can wait and wait for good results if we cannot wait, we're being like our two-year-olds that wants their toy, they want it now, they don't care that they have to get home, they have to get into the car and all that kind of stuff. They, they don't have the concept of just wait a few minutes, you're going to get your toy, right? You're going to get your food, you're going to get your, you know, whatever it is that, that, that you want, just give it a few more minutes, right? We are being that two-year-old. I am guilty of this, right? 
I'm guilty. Even as an adult, I am guilty of that lack of patience of planning my trade. I know it's a good trade. It normally will take, you know, three, four days to mature and give me what I want. So instead of, you know, getting that $3,000, for instance, I am like, I'll take that $500 right now. What did I just forego? I for I for. Now I'm gonna get in trouble with all the English teachers. Can we say for went? <laughs> Don't be. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't know. I I can I I, I forwent the twenty five hundred dollars. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna get some hate mail. Yeah. <laughs> who's who's an English teacher? Who, who can teach me what the right way to say that is? Right. So I forgo the $2,500 because of the lack of patience. Right? So I would say if you're uh, doing swing trades or you want consistency, then stick with the daily and the 15. Right. But I don't like swing trades. So can I still stick with daily and 15? You need to find strategies that support your trading style. Okay. Right. So don't treat day trading like a swing trade. Okay different strategies uh, so you and i talked the other day yeah. and we're going to devise a way to figure that out right how do you make that exponential amount of money on the same day or with, even within a few minutes mm -hmm. right that yeah. uh, that will still satisfy your goal let me see whether i've got any of my students in class here i think we i, I do have a few students in class and we we have we have some really good results trading in about 30 minutes mm -hmm. right we have some really good results so you can still meet that thousand two thousand dollar daily goal mm -hmm. uh, that a lot of my students are, are meeting when they are day trading okay which is different than swing trading a different strategy for different environment okay well that's a great question I'm going to revise my trading plan based on this. This is awesome. Awesome. Cool. Let's see whether we have any other questions here. Hey, I wanted to clarify something. Sure. Um, one of one of the questions you ask is, uh, should you um, get in the trade if it's not, um, say, at support or are at a resistance level? So um generally i'm assuming the answer is no mm -hmm. um so you usually wait for the right level to get in based on the trade that you're going to take i um generally trade spx yep and um it takes um time i guess for it to you know be in one of those two levels are you um going down to the 15 minute uh, to determine those levels also on the 15 minute to do like daily trades yes so, so when i'm day trading uh I, i'm almost micro I'm, I'm almost micro charting but i still depend on that 15 minute to help me stay in the trade as long as possible right now earlier on i say don't stay too long in a trade but but this is actually a good thing when you're day trading to be in the trade to meet your objective if you have a good sense of the direction and you have a good sense the chart is telling you where the price action is likely to go so i will usually be evaluating um, let, me, let me see if i can bring up here the uh, 15 minute so i'm looking at the daily on uh, on the spx and i'm going to go to the 15 minute let's let's look at this uh, yesterday what happened uh, this is a good example here uh, we were reporting a really strong open yesterday i believe it was almost uh, 50 points in the open uh, but shortly after actually even before the 15 minutes were over we started pulling back so the question is if my thesis was that this was going to be a green day and we start seeing that we are losing half the value here is this still a good trade right is this still a good trade so my stop loss should have kicked me out over here right because if i entered this right at the open or shortly after open i probably made the money here 
right? And then lost it on the second candle. And if I had a really tight stop loss, I should have been kicked out here. Now, if I was trading on the one minute, I'm going to go to the one minute chart here and look for Friday. This is it. What would have happened? I'd have been, my heart would have been really bad over here. Do you see this? Because this is the first one minute we shot up and then almost immediately what happened? We started going back down. Uh, that I think is micromanaging that account, that, that trade so badly that you have no idea what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, all the indications say that we were going up. Yet what's happening? You're losing money over here. Finally, you get stopped out. And as soon as you get stopped out, what happens? It turns around. So on the 15 minute, what was happening is that we opened the market, attempted to close this gap, failed because we tested it, failed. This is a very strong rejection. Look at the formulation of that candle. That's a, it's almost a hammer, if you will, right? It's a bullish candle. This is a bullish candle, not a, not a bearish candle, right? So, um, yeah, it, it would be bearish if it was this kind of candle. Do you see where the week is, the position of the week? Yes. Right? The week is at the top and the solid body is at the bottom. In this particular candle over here, the body is at the top, the week is at the bottom. That's a bullish candle. It means that there's a strong price rejection on the downside. So the thesis that it was a green day was correct at that particular moment, if you can read this correctly. If you're in a 15 minute time frame, that ought to be easy to see. Because what happened the rest of the day? We went up. In these next two candles, if you didn't make your money, then uh, I don't know, right? You maybe had too high of a, of a, of a target. So, mm -hmm. but uh, to answer your question there is, you know, should we, should we go, remind me the question now. Uh, the support and resistance. The support you, and the resistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you wait for the support and the resistance? Well, at this point, do you know what the support is? You always have to look to the left, right? Mm -hmm. You have to look to the left. Uh, the word right was just a figure of speech there. So you're looking to the left to see why is it that we, that we stopped where we did. For instance, we... I call this the magnetic line somewhere here. We we consolidated at this point, but if we look to the left, we can see that this is a very, very strong zone. We've tested that like a thousand times over here. Every time we reached that point, we paused or something happened, and then we came back to it. So it is natural that even as you're projecting on your day trading, you're looking to the left on that 15 minute to see what is your target point. So how I would calculate my target point, if I entered on this bullish candle, then I would see that maybe I enter around 38.30, give or take, right? 38.30. How, how, ma how many points do I expect or where do I think this is going to go? Then I have to look to the left to see, are there any gaps I need to fill? What are my resistance points? And I see that right around there, give or take 38.55 would be a great target, right? That would be a great target. So from 38.30 to 38.55, that's about 25 points. You know I don't take 100%. So I would normally take, I would only take uh, maybe 60% and, uh, and target to come out somewhere in between here. Does that, does that make sense? It does. It does. So All how right. do you decide, though, um, if you're going to go in on the first candle or wait for that second um, bullish um, hammer? My decision is probably going to be made in the pre-market what I am going to enter at. So this second candle, I don't know that it's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? I have no idea that it's going to happen. It's, it's, a, it's an anomaly actually for this kind of formation uh, to happen so quickly. So um, give me one second, hang on a quick second here. All right, I'm back. So uh, yeah, the decision would uh, normally be made, uh, at least for me, I would make the decision usually before the market opens. 
I will, will usually have defined what strike I am going to choose. If you've been in my power morning, you've mm -hmm. seen the way that I make decisions uh, and projections on where I think the market is going to open, what direction, how many points I think I'm going to target based on the data. It's not subjective. It has to be data-based. And based on that, that is how I build my uh, that is how I build my um, um, my thesis and my my trading plan. So yeah. Okay. So that 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 kind of answers the question. Um, then, do you necessarily wait, um, especially on the daily, uh, for price to be in the support or right. resistance? Area? So yeah, yeah. That's a, that would be a different strategy that, uh, mm -hmm. that we would build. Uh, the the kind of strategy that. Uh, that you have probably seen me take on uh, uh, on the power mornings is usually a day trading strategy. I have different strategies yes. for swing trading. For swing trading, I don't do swing trading in the morning. I will I will tend to I will tend to wait until later on in the day when things have settled and when the volatility has shrunk uh, to make a swing trade. So yes, premiums do seem to be cheaper. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they definitely are because of that IV crash that happens uh, within the, in the in the first hour of the day. So. Okay. Cool. Great question on that. Yeah. yeah, we need to talk some more on that, Eddie, later on. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see what other questions do we have. Uh, Cool. So, so let me ask, what kind of what kind of strategies are you all using? What what's the most common uh, strategy? Is it calls? Is it puts? Is it uh, you know spreads, flies? Hey Call. Eddie. Yes. This is Aaron. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well, man. How you doing? Good. I'm good. I have a question. Yep. Um. And I've just kind of uh, got onto your call and you might have already covered this, but like when you talk about your plan, do you actually talk about what type of stocks based on ATR to trade for your plan? Yes. So when we build a plan, we've got several plans, I've got several plans that I teach based on different strategies. If you're talking about calls and puts, which is the very, very basic, then that, the, that I call it the options trading plan, the basic options trading plan should cover most of that. And what that plan entails is identifying, first and foremost, the right stocks to trade, the right conditions to trade, how to determine your entry and exit points, and how to calculate your expected profit and how to figure out your how to figure out your your risk management so it's very very specific it's a full plan that goes from you know the planning phase all the way to getting out of the trade and then in between there's there's quite a few uh, there's quite a few details that we go through each strategy determine defines or needs a different plan a specific plan so if you if you have um, if you're doing spreads, you need a plan for spreads. If you're doing straight calls and puts, you need a plan for that. So we iron all of that out in the class. Gotcha. Would that be? Would that plan include like um, when I say type of stocks? You know, mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm meaning uh, you know ATRs. You yeah. Know, because um, you know you have some stocks that may have maybe dollar ATR, some that are you know fifty or hundred, uh, you know, or twenty. Yep. And yeah. is that something that you kind of focus on as well as to what type of stock of ATR to make your weekly profit or whatever your goals may be? 
Yeah, so I give an example here. Uh, I saw an, I give an example of uh, stocks that move five dollars on average, right? ATR greater than five. This is just one example, right? You may have a strategy that calls for a certain a certain gamma. You familiar with gamma, right? Very little, but yes. All right, gamma trades. Uh, gamma is the rate of change of delta. Right, so this time you're no longer focusing on the on the delta, you're focusing on the gamma. So there are trades, especially when you're working with volatility trades, like an iron fly, and you're trying to decide, are you going to go with a 30 wide or are you going to go with, with a 50 wide for that trade? In that particular scenario, you might want the stock to move only a few dollars. You don't want it to move more than five. So a gamma trade, for instance, on an iron fly would be on SPX, where you want SPX to trade within a certain range. Let's say I decide to open an iron fly right after the, you know, this, this particular moment, or on a day that I'm expecting that gamma is going to be very, very low, that once we open, we're going to be in that state for about an hour or two hours. So different, different strategies for different things. Well, wow. and that's an advanced uh, strategy. I haven't uh, introduced uh, gamma plays to a lot of my students. They are still working with Delta, uh, but there's a lot more stuff to learn as you get more and more advanced and as you want more and more money or you have a lot, you know, you have the capacity to, to, to risk more. So, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So cool. Let's see. Uh, let me answer this message here. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I was answering a question over there in the chat. So cool. Yeah, that's uh, what. What are you? Are you still trading uh, SPX, uh, Aaron? Last last uh, we talked, I think you were trading SPX. Yeah, I do uh, verticals on it. Um, okay. That's about all I do. I can't, I, I, my pockets ain't big enough to do, to, to do a couple of day trades on that thing, but verticals is fine with me on that. So that's kind yeah. of where I am on that one. It is a breadwinner for a lot of people. So, it, it, and I think it's great. Uh, I've been trading, you know, 99% of my trades are on SPX, uh, but I've been adding other things uh, like SPY and, uh, you know some other ETFs that uh, you know that interest me a little bit. Uh, somebody asked about Google, by the way, uh, at the start of the call. So Google is currently trading at uh, twenty something, right? Uh, what is the price right now? Twenty two thirty five. So twenty two thirty five, and the split happened. Should have happened today, or, or yeah. When did yeah. earnings conference? Uh, when did the split happen? Has already happened, right? So on Monday morning, if you had one share of Google, twenty-two thirty-five, thirty-five divided by twenty, it is going to be worth one hundred and eleven dollars, give or take, right? About one hundred and eleven dollars. That is not a. It's not diluting your the value of what you're holding you're just spreading it out you just have 20 stocks now or 20 shares uh if you had just one is that a benefit to you i'm not sure uh the only benefit that i see is if you had uh if you had five shares of google that might make a difference right it might make a difference why would it make a difference because then you can do covered calls because if you had five now you have 100 shares which is the minimum that you need to make a covered call. That's the only benefit I see. Uh, $100 stocks, um, I don't have a lot of $100 stocks on my portfolio. I like stocks that, that are worth a lot, move a lot, trade a lot. I think those are the three main, and they're stable, right? 
Uh, I used to love Amazon when it was in the three thousand dollar range. Not not because I have a lot of money to trade Amazon, but because it afforded me the ability to do some extra fancy trades like debit spreads and uh, those kind of things. Now, not so much. Right, not so much. So, All right. A hey, great question, Aaron. Any other any other questions before we wrap up? No, no more questions. Oh, I have a question. Sure. Is your power of morning open to everyone or just your students? Uh, just my students. Yeah. yeah. It is a benefit of uh, being an alumni of Options with Eddie. You get a lot of uh, perks with uh, with those power mornings and uh, extra material, extra library, uh, one-on-ones, and no, or no additional cost. Uh, so yeah, you get a lot of uh, benefits uh, with that. Uh, do we have payment plans? Unfortunately not. So maybe in the future we will have a payment plan, but at the moment not. So that's a question on the chat, by the way. So Cool. When's the next class? It's going to be in a, in a couple of weeks. It's going to be a Wednesday class. Uh, there's a lot of interest for the day Wednesday. So it's going to be a Wednesday. And there's a class that is in progress, a couple classes in progress right now. Uh, maximum class size is 10. Uh, so if it's full, you have to wait for the next one. Cool. All right, guys, uh, let, me, let me add my email here. I hope I spelled that right. It's info at optionswitheddy.com. And if you want to go to the website, it's optionswitheddy.com. Cool. If there hey, are... Eddie, yes. I have one more question. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Can you show us how... Like, say, for example, I want to do an order in Thinkorswim and I want to open a trade and then I want to do after trade is, you know, I purchased the open trade where I want to enter. I want to do a um, target and a stop, but I want to save those as templates. Can you show how to do that? Would that be like a straight call or a straight put, something like that? Yeah, yeah, straight okay. call. All right. All right, give me a symbol to work with. Um, let's try Apple. Apple? Yeah. Okay. So Apple right now is uh, approaching approaching resistance. Uh, do you want to do a put maybe? Yeah, let's do, do a wanna, put. That'd do you want to do a, a call? You want to do a put? Yeah. Okay. So here are the rules for a put. When we are selecting uh, the, t the strike price, we need the price or rather the strike needs to be greater than the current price. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to the options chain. First, we'll determine what the expiration date is going to be and based on the rules uh, 45 to 90 days so uh, four days between friends what do you think Aaron uh, that should be fine four days between friends <laughs> I think between friends it's okay right yes <laughs> right so we're gonna pick August 26 uh, as the date to expiration that's the first thing that we did and then we've determined that the strategy is going to be a put, meaning that we're going to take advantage of prices going down. So when prices are going down, we do a put. The current price is 150, so the strike we pick must be greater than 150. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. All right, so 155, what do you think? That works. I'm thinking 155. So... We're going to pick 155. It's going to cost us $9.50 in premium. I'm looking at the ask column. Uh, that just means that we're going to pay $950. That's how much we need in our account. That makes it a great trade. So before we go even further, let's look and see where do we think this is going to go to. If price were of Apple were to go down, where do we think it would go to? 
I think it'd go down to like 146. 146. Why 146? Because there's a support there. All right. I'm thinking the support is over here at 142. Gotcha. Why do you think 146? Um, I'm, I, I wanted to say buy zone, so I would mark that as the distal and mark the proximal at one, right around 146 area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anywhere in that in that range, that's where that stock would shift up. I hear you. I hear you. So, uh, yeah, proximal distal uh, is a concept that right probably works. <laughs> probably works I go more with the uh, support and resistance so I think the resistance is at 142 and uh, given that the price is at 150 right now I'm trying to evaluate whether this is a good trade right uh, my definition of a good trade I'll give you some tips I think it needs to move at it has to be, have a potential of at least ten dollars okay. right and then I will take about 60 percent of that so do I have ten dollars between where I am and where I think we're going. Uh, not quite. No. So let's look for something else. Okay. Um, that means that we have to do something like, like for example, on your list, we can look at um, Tesla, even though that's going to be a volatile right, let's, animal. But let's look. Tesla. Let's look. Let's look at Tesla. All right. So Tesla is uh, currently at. Uh, let me first clear my screen here. So Tesla is at seven twenty. Do we think this is going up or down, or where do we? What, what's the thesis? Uh, thesis on this. Oh, it's so unpredictable. But um, looking like it is about to approach um, the resistance area somewhere around a little above seven twenty to seven fifty range. Okay, so you think it's going to go up? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So that's uh, that's one thought process. So do you see anything of interest down here? Yeah, I do see um, earnings. That means up. that we don't have a clear indication and knowing what we know about Tesla, what happened the last time that we had earnings? Um, they typically drop. Okay. So to validate that, we're looking at earnings here. They dropped. They dropped. What do we think is going to happen now? It will drop again. They drop. Okay. So is 750 still a good idea? No. Okay. What is the next idea? Next idea, uh, if we are saying in our thesis that they're going to drop, we mm -hmm. should probably look at um, right around the range of maybe one, I mean, 650 to maybe the 625 range. Okay. So. If current price is 720, then I think the next support level, do you think 675 is the next one? Um, yeah. Yeah, price I, price came down here unchanged. And, uh, and so that tells me that that's a point of interest. Mm -hmm. We've also tested that area. So to be conservative, then we can uh, consider that as our next support level, right? Okay. And if we break, that's a good thing. If we do our calculations based on 675, I think that would be a fair deal. So the question now is between 720 and 675, do we have at least $10? Uh, Simple math, yes. Yes. Yep. So we don't normally go for the full 100%. Best case scenario is that we're going to buy a put at when the price is at 720 and it is going to drop straight up to 675. That's the best case scenario, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. because we are not going to go for best case scenario, we're going to see the difference between 675 and 720 is uh, about $45, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's go for about 60%. What do you think? Would that be cool? Yeah, that should be cool. All right, so 45 times 60% will give us $27. If we target twenty-seven dollars, what do you think? What do you think about that? Is that a good move? Yes, yeah, a good move. I think it's a good move. Uh, the ATR, based on my watch list, is about thirty-six. So the probability of moving twenty-seven dollars is actually pretty high within a day or two. Yes. All right. Let's go with twenty with twenty-seven dollars, right? Mm -hmm. 
I am going to go to my options chain. I'm going to, I guess I'll, I'll stay with uh, August 26. I'm going to spend a lot of money on this one, right? Mm -hmm. So my price is 720. I need a strike, the very fast one that is above 720. What do you think? We can either go with 720 itself or we can go with 725. Uh, we could do 720. 720 is fine because it's about uh, 20 cents off. Not a big deal. So $6,385. Aaron, you probably have 10 times of that in your account, right? <laughs> <laughs> Walk with me here, Aaron. The answer is yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> All right. So, so $6,385 is how much uh, you have available for this trade. And... And so we want to make uh, a trade. So what's what's the usual thing to do to, to when you're trading? You simply click on this guy, right? Mm -hmm. And it gives you that single buy one. We're going to spend six, three, eight, five. But we want to create a bracket order. This is this was your question. How do we create a template on this one, right? Yes. How, how do we create a bracket order on that? Uh, so there's it's it there's there's two ways to do it. Let's let's try one at a time. I'm first going to change this from advanced single order and I'm going to change this into a fast triggers OCO. One cancels the other or order cancels order. All right? Yep. All right. And then I am going to right click anywhere on this green line and I'm going to create another order. The question is, should be should it be a duplicate or should it be the opposite order? What do you think? It should be the opposite. The opposite because this order right here is to open the trade. So to close it, we need the opposite order, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to right click on these, create opposite order. And notice this time instead of buying, we're now selling. And we have to now adjust this price. How much do we want to sell it for is the question, right? What mm -hmm. price should we sell it? What do you think? Um, uh, we were saying, I think about $27. So mm -hmm. we want to sell it at, goodness, Let's see. So the Delta on this is about 46 at, at this particular moment. It's about 46, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we are expecting the underlying to move $27. So we're trying to find when it has moved $27, what will the premium be? The one that we bought at $63.85, what will it be after $27 of movement in the price of Tesla? So the way to calculate that is to multiply the delta times that movement. So using your calculator, what is 27 times 0.46? Uh, that is 12.42. All right. So it will have, the, the premium will have increased by 12.42, right? Mm -hmm. So 12.42 plus 63.85 is what? Uh, 63.85, we are looking at 76.27. All right. That sounds right. 76.27 is about right. We like whole numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Can we just do 7630? Yeah, fine. All right. And remember that number that you just gave me. What was that? 12 what? Uh, 1242, I think it was. 1242. So that is also equivalent to how much profit that we can get on this. How much in real money is $12.42 in premium? How much of that is in, what is that in real money? Um, that's $1,200 and 1242. I think it's a good trade. What do you think? I think so too. You're happy with 1200 bucks? I am. How much of that would you be willing to risk? Um, let's say, let's say $300. $300. All right. So we're going to create an opposite order. By the way, I want to change this from the day to GTC, right? And mm -hmm. I want to change that. Uh, that's fine. So now I want to create what a duplicate order because it should it should look like this, right? Yeah. All right. Let's do a duplicate order here and make sure that we change this one to a stop. And you said you want to risk three hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So at which point 
in the premium will you have lost three hundred dollars um, getting in, into these when the price is 63.85 at which point will it will you have lost three hundred dollars um let, let, let me help you out here so price is 63.85 price is Price is now 62.85. Have you gained or have you lost? You said price is, say that again. All right, current price is 63.85. We just clicked buy and, and we got filled. Mm -hmm. Time has moved. The mm -hmm. price is now 62.85. Mm -hmm. Have you gained or have you lost? We have gained because yep. we yep. are expecting price to go down. Uh, which price is going down? Is it the price of the premium that we paid or is it the price of Tesla? The price of Tesla. So Tesla has increased in value in order for this to go down, right? So mm -hmm. if 63.85 goes down by $1, what's happening? We're losing. We're losing, dollar. right? Mm -hmm. Right. So at 62.85, we've lost $100. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, at 6185 we've lost now how much um lost 200 dollars 200 dollars so at 60.85 we will have lost 300 dollars mm -hmm. so that is the number that we put in here right mm -hmm. in order for that to happen what happened to the price of tesla did tesla increase in price or did it decrease in price the Tesla price decreased, mm. right? No, let's think about that again. You mean this? You talking about the stock or the the premium? Yeah, the stock. Yeah, what the the price of Tesla, the seven twenty, did that go up or did that go down? If we, if the price of the premium is now sixty, did that uh, Tesla go up or did it go down? It went up instead of down, right? I'm lost now. Yeah. So let me explain it. Our thesis for this particular trade, we are saying that we think price of Tesla is going to decrease from 720 and it is going to go towards 675. Mm -hmm. For as long as that is true and that is happening, we will make money and we will continue to make money. But if Tesla instead increases in price, our thesis is no longer correct and we will start losing money. Uh -huh. You with me on that? Uh -huh. The premium itself, the relationship between the premium and the price of the underlying depends on the strategy. In a call, I think what you're used to is that when the price of the underlying is increasing, your call is also increasing. That's that's uh, the value of your call is increasing. That's natural. That's kind of standard, right? Mm -hmm. But now we are flipping the thinking here. We are saying that our thesis is that the price of the underlying Tesla is decreasing, but the price of the premium is going up. Should be increasing. Should be going up because we're buying low. We are selling high. What are we buying low? We are not buying the price of Tesla at 720, what we are buying is the contract that represents that at 63.85. If our thesis is that the price of Tesla should go down, then 63.85 should increase. Mm -hmm. But if Tesla increases in value instead from 720, starts going up to 721, 722, and so on and so forth, then our thesis is busted. And so our premium is going to decrease. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is why we have to understand the relationship. Remember in my slide, what we said here, let me see whether I can uh, find that. Uh, there we go. So remember when we talked uh, earlier on, we 
stressed understand the relationship between the price of the underlying and the cost of an options contract. You remember that? Mm -hmm. That bullet, very important to understand. A lot of people understand the calls, they don't understand the puts. We just demonstrated that. So important to go over that. So here's, here's, here's how the deal works. If we buy this for 63.85, our thesis is that it will continue to increase. If it does not, then we need to protect ourselves on the downside. How low can we go? And if we go as low as 60.85, we will have lost the $300 risk that you talked about. Is that what, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So that would be your bracket order. So let's assume, uh, well, first, do you have any questions on that? Do you want, does anybody have questions on that? Is that concept clear on the puts? Uh, I have a quick question about sure. um, the entry for the price. Mm -hmm. We can put it in a different way as well, right? Uh, yeah, there's plenty of ways. Okay. I just, mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, because okay. we, we did say that there are several ways, and we're going to go through them one at a time just to see which gotcha. one is the simplest to do. Okay. Gotcha. Right? I was thinking for the stop, you could put in um, $3. He could I mean, put in negative three dollars. Yes. Okay, and it has to be negative. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. It would have to be negative three dollars. Okay. Yeah. So this is the manual way. We are we are saying that if the price, which price are we talking about? The premium, sixty three eighty five. If that one decreases, we're losing money. Right. We're losing money. And so since we bought it at 63.85, if it is now valued at 60.85, we have lost $3 in premium. So $3 in premium is equivalent to $300 in real money. So Aaron, you there, you with me so far? Yes. All right, cool. And then we understood how to calculate the exit, the target exit. Mm -hmm. was, that, was that clear enough? Yeah. All right. Uh, a lot of math over here, but this will get us where we want to be. And then all we have to do now is just hit confirm and send. So that was a special case, right? I'm just going to, I'm not going to confirm and send. This is my simulated, but I, I'm not going to trade this. Uh, we demonstrated how you can, you can do that. Uh, by doing the calculations, by understanding that this is how you do it. This is what you look at. This is how you pick your strike. And this is how you go, right? So that's one way. I'm going to delete this and do it another way. The other way is to right click on that ask column. I'm, I'm right clicking on the price itself. And I'm going to buy custom with OCO bracket. I achieve the same results except that I have to change these numbers a little bit. Do you see that? By default, Think or Swim will give me $1 profit and protect me on the downside by $1. Do you see that? 63.85 giving me $1, so $100 and protecting me on the downside by $100. So I I always need to go in and do a an adjustment here and say that what was that number? 76.30, something like that. Yes. And down over here, 60.85, right? So we did the same thing, only we did it a little bit faster, right? Now, let's, let's automate this. We, want, we don't want to do this all the time. You know, calculating this just hurts my head, right? Especially at 9.30 in the morning when I'm trying to think. <laughs> you know? 9.30 in the morning, uh, that's a difficult time to think. Aaron, maybe you have a great trading plan and you have decided, you know what? Anytime that I see that I have got $15 in movement, I'm going to go for $10 mm -hmm. of that movement. Uh, Aaron, what do you know about Delta? I just know that every time it moves, uh, you... Uh... Every time the stock moves at one dollar, you get that delta. The um, amount of delta, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And delta can go from zero to what? To a hundred. 
zero to one hundred or zero to one, right? Zero to one. Mm -hmm. So right in the middle is what? Fifty. It's fifty, and you know that from uh, what we have always preached, we've always said we always go for the middle at the money. Mm -hmm. So delta 50 is at the money, right? Mm -hmm. Can we safely assume that delta at the money is 50, give or take? Um, sometimes it ranges between like maybe like, a, you know, 50 to maybe like 48 or something like that. Okay, so give or take is correct. Mm -hmm. So we can use 50, delta 50 for most calculations. Is that right? Mm -hmm. All right, that's what I'm trying to get to. So... Let's go back here now to your trading plan. You've decided that you're going to only trade things that more stocks that trade that, that, that have a potential movement of about say fifteen dollars, mm -hmm. fifteen, sixteen dollars. And so you can safely harvest ten of those dollars. Right? Say mm -hmm. that say the stock moves seventeen dollars. What is sixty percent of seventeen? Uh let's see. Seventeen times point six. Kind of calculate are 10 20 10 10 10 dollars and some change mm -hmm. and you have a slow calculator man <laughs> hey man this is these buttons here take a while <laughs> dude man we, we, need, we need to send you a calculator man <laughs> <laughs> took you that long <laughs> all, right. All, right. all right all right all right, we wouldn't beat you up too much. So we've we've uh, kind of figured out that uh, if a stock is moving seventeen dollars and greater, then you have about ten points, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we also evaluated a minute ago that delta at the money is fifty. Mm -hmm. If the stock moves ten dollars and you buy at the money, how much do you think you're going to make in premium? The stock moves ten dollars, mm -hmm. and we're going to buy it at the money. Assuming that at the money delta is fifty. Mm-hmm. Uh, five point one. Uh, let's just use whole numbers. Use ten. Um, it'll be five. Five, right? Mm -hmm. So the next time we look at a stock and we see, oh my goodness, this thing is, uh, you know, kind of moving around, you know, potential to move fifteen, twenty points. Can we just say whatever price we get into? We're just going to need about $5, and we think we can get it fairly easily. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. All right. That's what I am trying to get to. So here's the deal. I am going to create a template that gives me $5 every time. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. I'm going to create a, a template that gives me $5 every time. That's all I'm interested in. I know it can move more, but I just want $5. Five dollars, by the way, in premium is how much in real money? That's five hundred dollars. What can you do with five hundred bucks? I don't know. Um, maybe go buy something I want. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, 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 know, you can go have a haircut. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah, much you know. haircuts cost these days now. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you can go. You can go do something. Yeah, uh, I know the ladies can probably go get the nails done. Actually, I don't. I've never understood that 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 concept of getting. Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> not gonna go there. Uh, so what if I break this chain? Watch me what I'm doing, right? So I'm going to break this chain and notice. Well, first let me do this again. I'm going to do it in slow motion, as as slow as I can get, as I can do it. So Aaron, watch what I'm doing. I am going to break this chain do you see this uh, do, you, do you see my mouse by the way yes i do i'm going to click one time on this bad boy and what happened over here the word trg appeared let me do that one more time right now it's blank nothing else watch the word trg appeared mm -hmm. trg stands for trigger and it says plus or minus and 1245 or 12 for 40 something does that number look familiar that's the number that we calculated for movement, right? Yes. What if I just want $5? What do I need these numbers to be? Um, when you put in um, $5, this $5? All right. I'm going to do exactly what you said, 5.00. Or you can put... All right. Mm -hmm. Five. I'm going to put $5 here. 
What am I telling the system? I'm telling the system that when you fill my trade, just give me five bucks. I don't care how, whether it goes to 20, just, I just want five, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the same thing with my stop loss and say, I'm break this chain. And if I am losing by $3, mm -hmm. stop me out. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And because I don't want to do this every single time, first and foremost, I'm going to unlock this padlock so that it is relative to the current price of the underlying the premium of the underlying contract okay he is now where the magic happens uh do you see my delete button over here yeah to the left of it there is uh, something that looks like a floppy disk aaron you probably know what a floppy disk is i do <laughs> <laughs> let me see over here uh who are, where are the kids maureen does not know what a floppy disk is she's too young uh let's see yeah, floppy disk used to be that thing that we saved files. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I'll save too. Uh, files. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know all about it. Lynn doesn't know what a floppy disk is. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. I used to have one. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. My best, advice in my best advice in college was uh, to give you a Ziploc and uh, watch your homework disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going to push uh, on this thing and it says save custom order template. You see that? Mm -hmm. Just going to blank out everything and I'm going to call this one the Aaron. Right? Uh -huh. The Aaron is going to be uh, one limit. Take five. Risk three. What do you think of that name? I think that works. This is a bad A name, right? <laughs> this is the Aaron. I'm going to save that. Uh, I'm going to delete this order and go try it on something else. Let's say we've decided that, you know what? This thing is actually going to go up, not down. We still want $5, right? How do we use that template we just created? I'm simply going to go over to the call side on the ask column and take the first one in the money. I'm going to right click, buy custom, buy custom over there. I am going to choose the Aaron. Look at that. Is that good or is that good? That was a big jam. That was let's, a big jam. Let's go to let's go to SPX. Can we do that on SPX? Right. I'm going to try this on SPX. I'm going to go to 18 July. Things are moving so fast. I'm just going to buy a put over here, buy a custom. I'm going to choose the Aaron. Bada beam, bada boom. Price got filled in for me. I'm going to trigger, make $500 on that one trade. I'm going to risk $300. Aaron, I just dropped the mic. Did you see that? You did. You right. dropped the mic. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That was nice. Awesome. Let me ask you this, though, now that you dropped the mic. Mm-hmm. Will this particular setup that we just created, will this only work for a options play? Or could you yeah. use that as a stock play as well? Uh, I don't know how to trade stocks. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I'm going to sign, sign up for a class to trade stocks. I, 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 I do, you, do you know a class that I can take to trade mm -hmm. stocks? Uh, no, maybe it starts with Eddie, but I don't know if that started yet. So. I, nah, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. I've been looking on the internet. <laughs> Got gotcha. you. No, we don't do stocks, man. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. This yeah. was great though. This was, this was a big gem. I didn't know you could do it in awesome. that detail. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. And you can save as many templates based on, um, the condition so this this condition notice that we were able to use it on a put we were able to use it on a call we were able to use it on uh, any other symbol not just the one where you created it um, but for your homework Aaron yes see that bullet I have highlighted over there mm -hmm. you need to figure that one out 
because I noticed you have some trouble there. You need to figure that one out. And that's that's a lot of people, not just you. So mm -hmm. I'm just using you as an example, but it's super, super important to understand the relationship of the options price and the price of the underlying. Gotcha. This, this is where people trip because I can see how you're thinking. You had the word put, you know puts are when price of the underlying is going down, so you think that the contract price should be going down, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, it should be going up. So, uh, but we can uh, we can set you straight. Uh, options so that you can set you straight on that. Mm -hmm. I'm plugging in over there, so cool. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eddie. Awesome. You are most welcome. So. Good deal. We are just hey, at one o'clock. Uh, yes. Could we do that same set up next time? Uh, we meet, but do it opposite with selling and set up that template. Uh, you broke out for a second there. Can, can we do that same template with what? Can we can we set up a template? That was for buying. Uh, she's, she's, uh, she's, or, she's frozen. Or, uh, is she frozen for anyone else? Audio is just going. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear no, me okay? we can't hear you. Okay. Uh, but when you ask us, the week, the, <laughs> all right. Your question is: Can we do this for? I had time. Is that what you said? I for selling, we did it for buying. Selling. Set up a template for selling. Maybe credit spread. If if somebody heard her, can can they ask for? Her? He wants to know if you can set it up as a credit spread. Set up an example, a template for like. Oh, a credit, credit spread. Yes. You you can set up uh, one for credit spread or debit spread. Yes. Okay. But uh, it's, a, it's a little bit more. What I was asking is setting up that template, not just for buying, but for also for selling. Uh, with options, uh, yes, you can do it. Uh, you mean, uh, but, but we don't sell. We don't sell naked. You don't want to do that. So are you referring to selling options or are you referring to selling stock, shorting? Shorting, shorting. Shorting, okay. You can do this. Now, Aaron just asked me whether we can do this for stocks. And I, I just told him that I don't do stocks. But here's what you can do. Aaron, don't beat me up because I showed her not you, right? <laughs> Man, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. That's funny, Eddie. That's funny. I'm in trouble. All right. I can't believe I'm going to show you how to trade stocks on uh, Think or Swim. All right. So uh, Tesla, Tesla is a stock. The reason I went to Tesla is because uh, SPX does not have uh, stock options. I mean, uh, stocks, so Tesla. So anytime I see the price, I can do something with it. I can right click on it and I can do something. So when I want to trade stocks and not options, I will be right clicking on the price of the underlying and not the price of the, and not the contract, uh, not the options contract. So here's how I do it. There's two places that you can do it. You can either do it from your watch list or you can do it from the top bar over here. Do you see where it says 720? Yep, yep, okay, she can. All right, so I'm just yeah, going to right, right. I'm just going to right click on this one. I'm going to buy custom with OCO bracket and look at what happens now. This time, instead of trading options, I am trading stock. So I can buy one Tesla stock, not options, but stock at seven hundred and eighteen dollars and change. I can break this chain right here and say See. that you know what. When Tesla moves up, this time twenty-seven dollars, right? For plus twenty-seven dollars. Oh wait, she wanted to sell. Hang on a second. Let me change that. Uh, I'm going to right-click on Tesla, the price. I'm going to sell custom. Sell custom is the is the keyword over here, and I'm going to sell with a cust with OCO bracket. 
So Faye wants to short Tesla. Here's how you short it. I'm going to sell, meaning that I don't even own this, but I'm going to sell this, and you can do that. I'm going to break the chain. We did the math and said that once it has gone down $27, we're going to buy it. You see that? We are also now going to protect ourselves on the upside, and uh, she has decided that uh, she does not want to lose more than uh, how much? How much? Uh, how much do you want to risk on this, Faye? Uh, three hundred. Three hundred. You want? You want to risk? Uh, and how many are you buying? Ten. Five. You want? Okay. You want to trade five? So I'm going to go one. Nope. Oh, wrong direction. Right. She's going to sell five. And so we have to increase that five and do five. So let's do the math. In order to risk $300 and you have five contracts, so 300 divided by five is what? Six? 60? So 718 plus 60. No, plus six. Seven hundred twenty-four. So if the price increases to seven hundred and twenty-four dollars, let's do the math on that. Six times five is thirty. So this ought to be sixty. That's bad. Uh, 27, 60. This math would not be good. I would not risk $300 on such a trade. Because if you're buying five and your which potential, is, which, which, and your potential is profit is 27, right? 27 times five, your potential profit is $135. So if you're risking $300, you're risking way more than what you could potentially get. You see the math on that? So I would probably risk maybe $10 per trade, which makes it $50. That's about a one to, well, two to one. So if you were doing stock, and I don't teach stock, uh, this, this is how I would do it, Faye. But why are you doing stock? Faye, you don't want to do this, do you? Don't do this. I just yeah. wanted to know the setup. Okay, well, there's your setup. <laughs> there's your setup. Don't do this at home. <laughs> Eddie, I'm I'm very all right. Risk averse. I wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. And we're gonna have to buy your mic because we can't hear you. Or I think it could be your internet, maybe. Yeah, usually it's an internet problem, right? Yeah, usually it's when I don't know what's happening. Don't I don't. Yeah. I don't know what's happening with my Yeah, we can't hear her very well. She's breaking out every 20 seconds, so. But uh if you can hear me just fine, Faye, uh this is uh this is how you'd set up your stock template. Uh don't don't do this. We we don't like to trade stocks anymore. Uh they move kind of slow even though you can make your money. You can make 120 something dollars, but you'd spend a whole lot of money. 718 times 5 by my quick calculation here of uh, it, it's about $3590 $3590 to make $100 is a bad way to invest don't do it All right don't do it cool what are the questions do we have you're welcome uh what are the questions do we have before we if we call it a day is there a formula that you use for your um for your Stop. Do I have a formula? I mean, so there's something to go by. I'm like, because normally I know how much I want to lose, but it just seems like, I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking, is there like a guide or? I have a guide. Yes. I do have a guide that I have shared with my students in the trading plan. Uh, but I also have a big disclaimer that says that risk management is usually an individual consideration. Right. 
right. it is because it is based on your portfolio, it is based on your tolerance. Uh, but there are some general rules where I consider that if you're doing, if you're going to manage your, your risk in a certain way, it needs to be, it needs to support the thesis, right? And we just, uh, we, we just witnessed that over here. When, when Faye asked us to risk $300, we immediately had to figure out, well, if we're risking $300, well, how much are we getting? We need to be making a whole lot more than 300, right? Right, right. I'm trying to figure out because I don't want to just throw out arbitrary numbers. Like exactly, right. So when we, with stocks, uh, since we're expecting this particular stock to give us $27 per trade, then you know in in, that, in this particular example here we were getting about 27 times 5 because that's how many contracts the, um, how many shares so that's only $135 right so $135 on 5 shares it's not reasonable to risk more than then, you expect okay. what you're going to get okay right so relative to the risk you always have to identify that i want to make $500 should I risk 500 or should I risk 100 or should I risk a thousand dollars? Always risk less, right? Your starting point should be no less than two to one. The preaching or the most common, commonly uh, touted way is a three to one. Uh, but you will find that in many cases you actually want greater than that. You want a four, five to one, uh, sometimes even you know six or seven to one. So, cool. All right, uh, looking over here uh, on my messages. Um, if you sent me a direct, direct message, net. please email me if you're still on the call and I will help you out. Um, yep, cool. All right. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Uh, anybody else uh, have anything for the good of the course? Hearing none. This was great. We are out. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening, everybody. Have a happy Saturday. Thanks, Eddie. You're most welcome. Thanks, Eddie. Eddie. Awesome. Thank you. See you in two weeks. All right. See you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>